How you doing? This is Lance Hendrickson, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. All right. We have returned. Welcome back to Without Your Head Horror Radio. I'm the caretaker, Nasty Neely Jones, along with my right-hand man, Jeepers John. Oh, man. I love that. That was, that was pretty good. You got to keep that up for the whole show for now on. <laughs> the spooky ghost voice. Uh, All right. Nice. And my, I guess he's my left hand man. Ah, that would make me uh, terrible, Troy, the grave digger. Oh, I need to think about it. Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, and joining us tonight, all the way from the horror hotel, late night at the horror t- hotel, no less, is Rob the clerk and Chef John. And don't call What's him up, Chef guys. I yeah, no, <laughs> not re- not real fond of uh, not real fond of Chef Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that dude is. He kept sneaking in there. So how are you guys doing? We're doing good. How are you guys doing? Oh, not too Excellent. bad. Not too Excellent. bad, yeah. Who wants to call in tonight? What would the number be there, John? No, oh, that would be 508-644-8503. Uh, not to get confused, I'll just call you Jeepers. Jeepers? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody you, guys all, you, guys all, you guys all have nicknames. I feel a little left out. I mean... Uh, I, I kind of need the clerk. a. I guess, yeah. Not not by choice. Yeah. By, by profession, I guess. Mm. Mm. Well, well, we can come up yeah, with a nickname I'll... tonight. If anyone has a but, nickname for Rob, call in tonight and uh, and suggest one. <laughs> no, this should be fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> keep it keep it clean. <laughs> I let everybody know you guys' website's latenighthorrorhotel.com. And you want to just explain to everybody what's going on there? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, what we are is we're um, two horror hosts. Uh, we're based out of basically uh, Philadelphia area. Um, you know, John is, is Chef John, and he does a, a creature cooking segment segment on the show. Um, and what we do is, you know, we host, you know, terrible movies. Um, our first episode is due out this weekend. It will be Night of the Living Dead. Um, and basically what we are is we're, you know, we're working at a hotel, and we're surrounded by you know, all kinds of insane stuff, and we're stuck in purgatory, more or less. We're not really alive, not really dead. We don't really know what we are. So the the the, uh, the fun ensues. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool to me. Yeah. Now, is it the original Night of the Living Dead? Yes. I would not call that a horrible movie. Oh, man. No, I mean, I think, but I think it's like every horror host, um, I guess it's like their first film, you know, it's like the most notarized public domain film that's probably out there. Mm-hmm. You know, where everyone automatically knows that that one's public domain. So, <laughs> and you know, I'm a I'm a big zombie fan, and you know, and and John's a big you know uh, George Romero fan too. So, it just was uh, it was easy to pull into. And our second episode is Plan Nine from Outer Space, probably the second most Perfect. known uh, film. <laughs> it's a big drop off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're watching that one, you you might feel like you are in purgatory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you really, you really might. But uh, it, it, it's uh, the first two, first two episodes we filmed back to back, and they're, they're. I, I mean, I think we're both proud of them, so um, we're, we're hopeful. And then what we're going to do, I think, for the next few is we're going to actually switch to some kaju films and do like some gamma stuff and uh, some other stuff like that, just to kind of change it up a little bit, so we're not doing the same thing all all the time. Yeah. Now the chef, you said he's doing the the creature cooking on the show. Like, uh, what kind of dishes is he going to be preparing? Well, pretty much, I try to base whatever movie we're watching. I'll base a uh, meal towards it. So, uh, you know, like the yeah. old, like the uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space one, mm-hmm. because of uh, the director winning the Golden Turkey Award. I mean, turkey meatballs and spaghetti. All right. So I try to find something with it that matches the movie. See, like that's the, a good uh, tie-in, though. If if you make them like Swedish meatballs, do like turkey Swedish meatballs, then you get like a little Tor Johnson in there too. Oh, well, that's true. Thinking, thinking on a seat there. Uh, Thank you. I, I like that idea. Well, Feel free <laughs> to use. It. Mm-hmm. Now, are you an actor? Right Jeff. Right now, Johnny. <laughs> no, I am a. Uh, I'm not really an actual chef. I'm a learned chef. How about that? Mm-hmm. No, I've, uh, 
I've I studied with my friend who owns a restaurant. He's taught me everything I know. Um, I take some classes, but I can't say that I'm a classically trained chef. <laughs> right. Now, are you guys into commentary, like, while the movie's on, or do you guys just, uh, you know, host them and introduce them, and, the, like, during the, the first The first few, we're, we're actually not going to. Um, what we do is we do an intro, we do a couple of spot breaks, you know, we do a finish. Um, we do have one voiceover part in the first episode, but it's nothing major. It's it's just, uh, like, a, like, more or less, a, you know, a, a sound gag more than anything, but... You know, uh, basically what it is is the first episode is, um, you know, I'm not real fond of the term zombies, and uh, I prefer, to, you know, them to be called undead. And uh, what we do is I organize a telethon for the undead to help, you know, the, to help feed the, the needy undead. So uh, it, it doesn't really pan out that well for me, but everybody will have to kind of watch and see how much money I actually raise. <laughs> Sounds like good times. That's a worthy cause, I think. Yeah. And it actually is. You get Jerry Lewis on that, I'm I'm there for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have a little contest on the website right now. They're uh, giving us some DVDs to give out for uh, the new Romero, Survival of the Dead. Have you guys seen it yet? Survival of the Dead, I have not, actually. I, there was an opportunity where I could see it, but I, I, I kind of chose not to, to go the illegal route, and uh, right. I'm waiting for the actual release. Yeah, this Friday it's on uh, video on demand, and then uh, I think next month it's uh, at the theaters, kind of reversed. Mm-hmm. What would be your favorite horror, uh, your favorite zombie film? My favorite zombie film, um, you know, I, I'm a I'm a huge fan of uh, the Dawn of the Dead, the the yeah. original Dawn of the Dead. I think that's probably, um, you know, they start out in Philadelphia and they then they venture their way out to Pittsburgh, and there's just something about that movie that when it was one zombie film that I had when I was younger you know, the old VHS clamshell box, and it just was a film that I I watched over and over and over and never really got tired of. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've said many times. Same here. Yeah, that's always been my favorite. What about John? It's pretty much the same thing. I mean, unfortunately, Rob and I have a lot of the same taste, so it's kind of easy to watch the films with him. Right. Now, you also have uh, Pugly on your show. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually my dog. Um, I have three pugs, and we chose... The, the dog Pugly is actually a girl. Her name's Princess, and she is the fattest, most laziest dog you you could pretty much get. So, I figured that we would, you know, incorporate her in the show, and she just sits there. And you know, a lot of the shows, I'll open up the show and I'm playing a game with her or, or whatever. You know, I'm trying to, to occupy my time with her. So, um, yeah, it's fun. I just thought it was something different that I haven't really you know, seen anybody do, and of course she doesn't talk, and I just talk to her, which makes me just seem less and less, you know, stable. Right. Yeah. It's, it is hard to find a talking dog. Yeah. I yeah, no, I haven't haven't found one yet. I keep trying. Mm-hmm. Nice dog talk in its own way, though. Uh, Troy used to have a pug. Yeah, pugs oh, really? are great. Yeah, I have, I, love pugs. I, have, I have three, so if you actually hear snoring, she's actually sitting here with me, so yeah. she's found yeah, asleep. The door stops. Yes. Yep. She sleeps probably twenty three hours out of the day. Uh, well, what kind of genre of horror movies do you guys prefer? Uh, I'll let John go first. Uh, I'm letting you go first on this one. All right. Remember, uh, you're genre the genre of, of, of horror movies. Um, right now, I've been on uh, a big kaju kick where I just can't seem to. I just can't seem to get enough. I, I you know, I've been watching. Um, like today, I was watching uh, War of the Gargantuas. Um, you know, that's more like a sci-fi horror, which uh, nobody really covers that much. Um, as I far as seen actual that movie horror, years. yeah, I know. See, the same with me. Um, as far as actual, I'm a, I was a big fan for years uh, of the August Underground, the toe tag stuff, and a lot of the more you know hardcore horror stuff. But as time goes on, I'm I'm kind of tired of a lot of the stereotypes that fall into horror movies, so I'm always looking for something different. You know, I, I get tired of seeing it's, you know, always the young kids. It's always the kids that are doing drugs. It's always, you know, the it's always the same, 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 you know. And I, you get tired of it, so I'm always looking for something different. So, you know, I enjoyed films like, uh, if, if you guys saw Martyrs last year, I don't know if you guys saw that one. That was a French French horror film. That film was fantastic. Yeah. It just it, blew me out of the water. Yeah. Uh, John, did you have a favorite uh, genre? 
You know what? Right now, I'm just more stuck on a series right now, and it's just Critters. I've just been rewatching that over and over again right now. Yeah. Definitely, definitely classics. Yeah. Uh, actually, when uh, Rob brought up um, Martyrs, that's like a movie with a big buzz on the internet. Do you think, like nowadays with uh, Netflix and so much stuff on the internet and and, uh, and DVDs stuff, you think it's like a good time to to get uh, DVDs and Blu-rays to, to be seen, you know, more widely? Uh, I think it's. I think it's easier for people to get their film seen. That's for sure. I mean, if you if you have Netflix, I mean, I have Netflix and I watch it, uh, you know, every day. Whenever they put up new horror films, I'm always watching it. And the the level of some of the horror that's out there is just it's it's kind of it's kind of stinky. You know, it it kind of sucks, honestly. Right. And it, it's just a lot of a lot of goofy, like really low budget stuff that I, I'm always shocked that they put on there. Um, I think if if you're an independent director. And you're, you know, smart about marketing. I think that you can, you know, get your get your product seen. It's just a matter of, you know, the internet's your best friend. You know, it's gonna you're gonna create enough hype for it. So, you know, building the hype up is is part of, you know, what pe- what's gonna make people want to see it. You know, there was a lot of hype. Um, like right now, I, today I actually received a DVD in the mail. I received Long Pigs and. Um, it's a movie that I've been waiting to see for like five months because the internet buzz was huge. It's, you know, it's similar to like, it, it had always been, I guess, um, associated with, it was similar to like the August Underground, but at the same time it was associated with similar to uh, the rise of Leslie Vernon uh, behind the mask. And I watched it today and it's not really a comb- it's not a combination of either. It's while it kind of looks like that, it's got the shaky camera it's about two um, struggling filmmakers that decide that they're going to follow a cannibalistic serial killer, like as like on his everyday routines. And while the ending is predictable, I think that everything else, like the meat of the story, makes up for it. I think it's really good. I was I was blown away by it. I'm glad that that was a movie that had a lot of hype and kind of lived up to its hype for it. So I think the Human Centipede is going to be the next one that. You know, everyone's talking about, no one can get enough of, and it's, it's, I think what makes it better is they really released very little information about it. So, you know, you see like the clip of what the diagram is supposed to be on how they're supposed to link the people together, and they, you've seen like a glimpse of the trailer, and uh, it, it makes me want to see it more, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. That movie worries me, I'm not sure about that one. Oh, about that one? I don't know. I yeah. think it's, I think it's going to be uh, I think it's going to be fun to watch. You know, the At foreign least it's got the foreign, some buzz the, to it, which is good. The for the foreign uh, genre of horror right now is just it's fantastic. It's it's such a shame that the U.S. can't get their act together and stop with all the remakes and start mm-hmm. you know coming up with some originality. I mean, these other these other you know countries are just coming up with all kinds of original stuff right now. Um, actually, when we had Adam Green on, and he used to be the uh, the tag on Hatchet was it's not a uh, it's not a sequel, it's not a remake, it's not based off a Japanese one, and I always thought that was funny. But he said that was from an actual rejection letter that he he got when he sent in the movie was they didn't want to make it because it wasn't a remake, it wasn't a, based based off a Japanese movie, and it wasn't a sequel. So I, I think it's just hard for people to get a uh, to get something original made. That's not what they want to make. I mean, I agree with that. I definitely think that, you know, Hollywood is so afraid dollar-wise to spend their money on uh, a chance when they have, like, you know, like, let's talk about, you know, tomorrow Nightmare on Elm Street opens up. And, you know, most of us older horror fans, you know, are kind of, um, I can't say I'm really that excited about it. You know, Robert Englund's always going to be Freddy to me. So, you know, I was, I was, I grew up watching it. So it's going to make it harder for, me to accept, you know, um, the new guy as as Freddy. So I, th- I hope it helps the genre as far as creating new horror fans where they're going to want to see the original and they're going to want to see other films and stuff like that. But at the same time, I mean, I, I can't say I-, I probably won't go see it. I don't think. I mean, I might. I don't. I don't know. The that movie is a lot different than the than the other when they remake, uh, you know, Jason and whatnot because everyone associates. Freddy Krueger with Robert England. It's not a guy in, in just a mask. Uh-huh. Right. So it's going to be really hard to, for anyone to step into that role. Right. I think that, you know, he's really got um, an uphill battle in front of him because 
he, I mean, everybody loves Robert Englund. If anybody's ever been to a horror convention, the guy goes out of his way. He's very polite. He's nice. He's been in a bunch of movies. I mean, you never see any negative press about him. He's always, you know, he's always been a genuine person. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to, that's really an uphill climb that he's going to have to make. It's going to be tough. That movie better be amazing. And from what I understand, the um, early reviews for it have not been that stellar. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, everybody reviews a movie different. I mean, John and myself will review movies, and, you know, we'll, we're, we'll like some stuff, but then other people will say, oh, that movie was junk, you know? So it, it, yeah. it is what it is. Everybody has their own opinion. You always get that. Now, do you think uh, a remake's always bad, though? Because, you know, sometimes just when someone announces they're remaking something, everyone jumps on it, you know, oh, it's going to be terrible. Why are they remaking it? I mean, there have been good remakes. I've given a lot of remakes a chance. Um, you know, it seems like I, I mean, for one, I, I can't, I couldn't stand uh, Halloween, the remakes of Halloween one or two, and and basically it was because I'll give you like a wrestling analogy uh, on how to describe why I thought I thought that you know um, Halloween didn't really work because you guys are big wrestling fans, so you'll understand. So. You watch the, the first half of Halloween, and, you know, they build up Michael Myers as, like, the sympathetic baby face. Like, oh, you know, I, I have a bad family, da-da-da, I'm abused, I get bullied, and everything else. And you kind of, like, root for him. Oh, he beats up the bully. Oh, that's cool. You know, and there's a little bit of sick scenes in there, but nothing real major to kind of turn you. And then they try and do the heel turn by having him do, you know, um, beat up the, and kill the, uh, the guy that was uh, the caretaker for him in the asylum itself, you know. And I just think by that point, people had given up really caring about it, and, and the, heel, the heel move wasn't, like, bad enough. It wasn't, like, something that I would say, oh, my God, I can't believe he did that. It was just like, eh, you know. And then and the, and the second one was just, just terrible from the get-go. <laughs> I, I, I can't say a kind yeah, word about that movie. good about the second one. I actually yeah. enjoyed, the, I actually enjoyed was... the original, the first remake. I thought the second movie was just got awful. Mm. I didn't yeah, really... I really enjoyed the first one, too. Yeah. I, like... I just think that what made what made Halloween scary and what made Michael Myers scary is that you didn't know what, what he was or what he was about mm. or mm. much of his past or anything else. He was, it was a mystique. Yeah. So once you, once you give that away... You know, when you show everything else, okay, then what, what's there really be afraid of? Yeah, the guy's like, you know, six foot eight or whatever, and he's, you know, hulking, you know, stabbing violent mess. But other than that, I mean, I don't know. There's, there's, it's just like a carbon copy of every other, you know, slasher film that's out there that's, you know, just filled with violence and not really any, any meat to the story. Yeah. At least that's my opinion. You know, but like I said, that everybody has, a, has, an, has their own opinion, so... I agree with you. Michael Myers was pretty scary whenever he, you know, you didn't know why he was so crazy and wanted to kill people. So I agree with you on that. But I don't know. The remakes that works both ways, though. Yeah. Well, the remakes that come out by Michael's Bay, Michael Bay. I mean, they're just they're just god awful. (laughs) At least like Rob Zombie presented something that was like, I don't know, somewhat watchable. It was a labor (laughs) of love. You could kind of tell, you know that. That there was some love that he had for the original. I know John here, he hated the remake of Friday the 13th. Oh, my like, yeah, God, that freaking remake. <laughs> I'm Jeepers <laughs> tonight, though. Oh. <laughs> Nasty Neil. Yeah, you know what? I, I mean, I, I actually, uh, I'll tell you a story. It's, it's terrible, but I went with my oh, family wow. to go see a, a film, you know, at the theater, and Friday the 13th was in the next theater, so... Our theater got out, so I was like, oh, I'll just, you know, sneak in there and catch like, catch a glimpse or whatever. I don't know. I was like 30 minutes in, and finally I was like, I almost wanted to go ask for my money back. I didn't even pay to go see it. It was terrible. <laughs> it, was, it was just awful. It was an awful film, and it didn't make any sense. Like, it's just, I don't know. Like, the whole, like, oh, oh, let's go find, like, the secret weed patch, you know. Oh, come on. Just come up with something better, can't you? Like, what's wrong with the original story of having camp counselors that are at camp that are trying to set up the camp prematurely, you know, and, and it just, I don't know, it just didn't make much sense to me. It was just a mess. And he was keeping the girl in, like, the tunnels, and yeah. I don't know. And they also Not had techno time. music. Like, they <laughs> replaced, yeah, yeah, you know. They replaced Harry Manfredini's uh, music with techno. <laughs> what the hell was that? You're not a fan of that? No. <laughs> 
Um, you uh, mentioned some uh, long pig stuff. Is there any other movies that uh, recently came out that you know some people might not be aware of that you guys really liked? Uh, John, you got anything? Now, like I said, I haven't been really watching any of the newer movies. I just nothing's almost original anymore. I'd rather watch the old stuff until I see something that really sparks my interest. I, I won't watch any of the remakes at all. I haven't seen a single one yet. Did you guys um, see the? Th- I, hey, go on. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say uh, before you answer. Did you guys see the uh, 3D remake of uh, Night uh, Night of <laughs> Living Dead? Yeah, with uh, Sid Haig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually made the mistake. I made the mistake of buying it because I was a big oh. Sid Haig mark. So I was like, oh man, I want to see it. It's gonna be fantastic. Oh, it's. I mean, I still have it because I'm you know a Sid Haig fan, but oh, just it was awful. It was, and there was like. The whole premise was like, oh, it's going to be 3D. And was there not just like four 3D scenes in that whole movie? Yes. <laughs> Plus it was it, ridiculous, it right? It's kind of like what you're saying, too. Is that, like they have to add this weed storyline in it. And it's like young kids. And they, they change like the basic characters all around. It's a bad movie. I don't understand why they yeah. had to add all the stuff about the marijuana. And it, and it just didn't belong in the movie. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. Um, I also wanted to just uh, mention that we're uh, right now we're promoting our, our tour of terror, and uh, what that is is we're trying to find um, as many haunted houses and haunted attractions that we can find on the eastern region. Like we'll hit like you know uh, we just got we got a spot in Ohio that we're going to be visiting uh, called the Forest of Fright, and uh, we have some other spots that are, we're talking to right now. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and entertain the people that are there waiting in line. And we're going to try and have, like, you know, a little, I guess, stage act, I guess you could say. And, you know, if they have a projection area, we'll show some clips from the show. We'll show some clips of some classic movies. Um, and everyone is real popular, you know, real hot about it. So it seems like it's a really good idea. I can't believe, you know, more people weren't thinking about it because it seems like, uh, I mean, it should be fun, you know. Plus, we'll document everything, and we're going to show some stuff on the show. We'll host some movies from the, those events, but we'll just tape them and then, you know, edit them in later on. So it should be a great time. Cool. There's a suppo- so, supposedly a haunted uh, graveyard up the street from here. I believe a sci- uh, sci-fi filmed something there uh, last year or so. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, we're just looking for the month of October for, you know, like the haunted houses and and stuff like that. So, um, like this weekend, I'm, I'm going to be... Um, I, I will be, John actually has another event. Uh, I'll be at the National Haunters Convention, which is in uh, Valley Forge, uh, Valley Forge Convention Center in King of Prussia, PA. And that's like a big, you know, um, convention for all people that have haunted houses and haunted attractions, and they're looking for special effects and everything else. So, I, I mean, I'm hoping to, you know, grab some new contacts from that, too. I have a lot of meetings set up already, so, it should, I mean, it should be a great time. I'm, I'll actually be there Saturday. Cool. Now here in the chat, go and look for me. Go on. So. Yeah. Uh, here in the chat room, they're asking about the Italian horror film. The Italian horror film. John and myself, um, we just um, filmed a review for it on. Was it Wednesday? Tuesday. Yeah. Um, no, I think and, it was Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, and uh, we'll it'll be up next week. And uh, basically, what it is is Tom Burdinsky, uh sent us. Um, his film to watch, and it's a two-parter. It's part one and part two, and it's like the zombie atrocity and the uh, zombie abomination, I think, without looking at it. Um, and it's it's like a like an homage to Italian horror films. And um, both John and I uh, watched it, and we liked it. And um, I, I, first of all, I will I will say one thing is that that Tom went like above and beyond. He sent us like a screener, an actual DVD script stuff, business cards, napkin from, like, I guess his first premiere or whatever, and um, it was a good film. You know, there's some scenes in it that uh, really remind me of, of uh, specifically, it reminds me of The Gates of Hell, um, which is a Fulci movie, which, you know, there's actually a character named Fulci that's in it, so, um, you know, I think it's... Um, I think it was really good. I think it's worth for people to check out. I think it's the Italian zombie movie dot com, I think. I mean I'm if if Tom's in the, the uh 
the, the, the chat room, um, he'll be able to probably put up a better link. But uh, it was a good film, you know. I, I, I liked it a lot. The only, I guess, you know, you'll see our review about it um, next week. It'll be on LateNightHorrorHotel.com. Um, I mean, it doesn't take itself serious at all. I mean, it's like a spoof, you know. It's 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 just that's a little. It was a, just a lot of characters, you know. It was just a uh, there was a lot for me to ingest. But uh, I had a, I had a fun time watching, you know. And, and uh, it'll be a DVD that'll stay in my collection for you know for a while that I'll go back and watch again. So hopefully people will check it out. Uh, John, did you want to th- say anything about it? I I just really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was kind of funny. I. Really like the fact that it was a uh, creepy masked wrestler who was going around molesting people everywhere. Right. Yeah, there was a masked wrestler that was a pervert. It was awesome. I, <laughs> it was me. That's. I just thought it was hilarious. You know, uh, it was like, it was like being in a locker room with like Jerry Lawler when there's like thirteen year old girls around. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole different kind of movie, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are gonna be reviewing those. No. Uh, what was the uh, uh, Jeepers? You can help me out here. What was the uh, the Lucha horror movie that was out? Oh, like? WrestleManiac. Wrestle was that? Oh, WrestleMania? that that's on uh, that's on Netflix, and I haven't watched it yet. I've been kind of. Oh, that, it. that's actually really good. I I I'd, I'd, uh, recommend watching that. Oh, really? Just I have to check Mysterio that. Senior. Yeah, I heard he's in it. It's crazy, right? Yeah, they kind of. They don't think they say senior. They say Mysterio. I think trying to get people to think that. <laughs> Mysterio Jr.'s in it, but it's good stuff. Oh, is there any yet? Uh, yeah. Well, I guess he had the name first. <laughs> is there any, uh, do you have any, like, favorite character actors that you see pop up in different movies? Uh, I'm, for me, right now, um, I kind of, I like Bill Mosley a lot right now. I just, I think yeah. that whenever he takes a role, even though you, you know, him, like, for me, I always recognize him as Otis. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, from uh, Devil's Rejects and uh, and House of a Thousand Corpses, but I just saw him in a film called House with yeah. uh, with uh, with Leslie Easterbrook. Mm-hmm. Um, on a couple weeks was, ago. Yeah, and that was a great interview, by the way. She was fantastic. Yeah, was, um, yeah, she was the nicest person. Yeah, hopefully you say the same about us, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. Um, oh, no. But I, I just I just saw that and. Um, you know what made me want to watch it was the fact that she, you know, said, "Oh, didn't she? Wasn't that the film where she was saying like one of the cast members was like, yeah, you know, not yeah, 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 I think you could kind of uh, figure yeah. out stuck right, and it was it, it, it's so noticeable in the film if you if you watch the movie, mm-hmm. it's uh, it, it's pretty funny. Which so, probably answers why he's not is, bigger movies because he's a great actor. Yeah, yeah, but the film itself wasn't that bad. It was. It kind of had like a twist at the end. It was. It wasn't yeah, terrible. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, it I wasn't think bad. What she said though, I thought it started out really good. and I thought the end was cool. A little bit in the middle, it kind of wandered off. But uh, yeah, with the little girl, it just kind of was like, wow, you know, it was kind of weird. Like they almost didn't need that little girl character in that movie. Yeah. I, I guess uh, Thomas was trying to call in. I don't know if he's calling in or not. Uh, we may have problems with the the phone because I know John can call in earlier. So sorry, anybody yeah. who's trying to call in and they could not get through. Is there any uh, film that you've watched recently that uh, was like uh, being in purgatory watching it? <laughs> uh, uh, Attack of the Killer Shrews. <laughs> Attack of the Killer Shrews, yeah. that's. Uh, I think John also mentioned that he just watched Santa Claus uh, oh, versus Congress the Martians. Martians. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a bad one, too. No. Yeah, I haven't seen that one in years. The uh, shrews I mean, is you know great, what? though. Just for the dogs dressed as shrews, that's worth watching. <laughs> just for that, my goodness. I, I, I just watched. Uh, I watched. What was the name of that film? I just watched yesterday. It was uh, Alive or Dead, maybe that was on Netflix. That was like, it wasn't. It, it started off pretty good, and then it just kind of went south. Like, um, it was like this girl finds this boss on the side of the road with like "Help Me" written in blood. And she gets on the bus for some odd reason because she has, like, a flat tire. And she's like, oh, let me get on the bus for some reason. And uh, there's, like, a girl that's chained up there. And this guy, like, decides he's going to take the bus. And they think it's the killer. And they don't know. It was just, I don't know. It, it was it was pretty bad watching it. But, uh, yeah, there's tons of movies that are that are just terrible to watch. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm actually having a hard time digesting some of, like, the lower-end trauma movies lately. 
Like, yeah. I don't, oh my. you know. How is that possible? For, when I was, <laughs> yeah, when I was younger, I used to, like, be a big fan of the trauma stuff. But no. now, yeah, I just, I, I don't know. It's The, uh, the, the uh, chicken one was really good. Uh, poultry. Oh, poultry, poultry geist, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, Besides I mean, that, pretty much all the two ones I, I actually really liked it, uh, but I agree with most of the other ones. I, I can't really sit through them. Well, it's kind of like yeah, the full like, moon did the same thing, you know? I got a tough time with their movies lately. Yeah, you, you know, I agree with that. <laughs> I, not part two. I don't know. Call me crazy. Now, did you guys watch, um, what was it called? The Passion of the Passion of the Crust or something? The The... The cookie thing there. What was his name? Uh, ginger gingerbread. Ginger yeah, gingerbread, gingerbread man. man. Yeah. The first one wasn't that bad because I had Gary Busey in it, but I heard the second one doesn't have a minute, so I can't expect much from it. Yeah. It seems like a lot. They used to be. I used to really like like the Puppet Master films and the uh, yeah. ones with the vampires. What were they called? Uh, what was that yeah, called? Yeah. Subspecies. Yeah. yeah. He, he had another one that wasn't bad too. Um, Castle Freak. Yeah, that one's good. It well, seems like that one. yeah, it seems like a lot of the later ones though. It's just like a bunch of young adults talking and doing nothing. Then like the last like five or ten minutes, like the the monster of the movie pops up. He does have a new one coming out, uh, Axis of Evil, I think it's called Puppet Master. So huh? he's you know I I don't want to give him like a huge plug, but if you go to Full Moon Direct, you can actually buy the DVD and it comes with the Toulon's uh, trunk in it. Um, it comes like a replica Toulon trunk that you can get. Plus, you can get all the replica dolls. Like, I actually have a replica of Pinhead because I always thought he was the coolest one. Mm, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's got like a thing where you can get the Blu-ray or you can get the DVD. And I think he's got. I think it's like seventy bucks or something. I want to say. I, I don't know exactly, but um, I watched this trailer. It doesn't look terrible. I mean, it looks. I, I, if if he's smart, he'll kind of go back to what made those movies good. You know, people want to see. People want to see cheese a lot of times if they're watching that stuff. Yeah, and you want to see you want to see the monster, the monster, or the doll, whatever's in it. You want to see it throughout the movie, not just pop up the last couple minutes. And you want to see it yeah. blast to space. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want to see anything blasted into space. Oh, okay. Uh, we got I think a. So. Uh, I think so. We got a Weeble calling in. What's going on, Neil? How's it going, Weeb? You got a question? No. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about zombie movies. Uh, I don't think we mentioned about the 28 days later and 28 weeks later and possible 28 months later. Mm-hmm. That's another zombie, you know, franchise. Um, I, I mean, that was was that really technically a zombie franchise though? That was more like an illness, right? They get they were infected with rage. Oh man, mm-hmm. it was yeah, a zombie yeah. movie, I think. <laughs> I can see what he's saying, because, you know, when, when the Crazies came out recently, remake of the Crazies, which I actually really liked, almost all the reviews yeah, I saw of it, they're saying they're calling it a zombie movie, and there's no zombies in the movie. Mm. They just get killed and they're dead. They don't come back from from the dead. Yeah, they just yeah, come I mean, basically. I did, I did like, uh, I liked the first one, um, what was it, 28 Days Later? I did like that one. 28, 28 Weeks Later, I think, was the second one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I have it. I haven't watched it. Yeah, I, I don't think it was that bad. I thought they were pretty good, and um, they were they were both uh, you know what were they from? Uh, what were they shot out of? They weren't they weren't American films, were they? Yeah, I, I think, think they're so. British. UK. The dude who yeah, did the yeah. uh, Slumdog Millionaire uh, boy. Yeah, I mean if you talk if you talk zombie films, like Danny you could boy. say Dead Alive was fantastic. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a ton of ton of zombie movies that you could you know you could talk about as far as. Um, you know, really making the uh, the genre worthwhile. You know, a lot of people give a lot of um, Romero's movies a lot of, you know, they kind of crap on them a lot. Uh, like, I know that for me, like, when I look at all the films that he's done as far as the zombie stuff, for me, Land of the Dead was probably the worst, but I'm always shocked when people say, oh, Diary of the Dead was the worst. I don't think Diary of the Dead was that bad. I mean, yeah, it was some CGI stuff, and the story was a little thin, but I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was nearly as bad as the zombies having thoughts and you know being attracted to fireworks and I don't know. And you know, and you can only do so much with Leguizamo and um, and uh, what was the, the main guy's name there? Dennis Hopper. Drawing a blank. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a great actor, and he. Yeah. I just. I didn't think that. I just I thought that was probably the worst. So I'm anxious to see Survival of the Dead 
mm-hmm. because I think it has like a Western kind of feel to it, from what I understand. I said I haven't seen it, so I don't really know. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree with you. I thought Land of the Dead was by far the, the worst one. It's probably the only one I didn't like. The only I know some people love Diary of the Dead, and I actually enjoyed it. The only thing I didn't really like about it was the music in it. And there's like a little throwaway line in the movie saying that like some about how she added score to the movie, which really didn't make any sense at all. Like if you had this film of your friends being like killed by zombies, why would you go in and add like uh, you know mu- suspenseful music? Uh, that just didn't make right. any sense to me. This is supposed to be all handheld, you know. This video. Oh yeah, when she's like editing her own footage, yeah. There's definitely it's definitely flawed. I mean, there's no doubt. Uh, um, that's about I the, only the only way that he. I guess that was the only way he could really tell that story. You know, I don't know if I'm tired of the handheld yet. You know, that was that's another thing that people bring up a lot. You know, it's a cheap way to make a film, yes, but if it's done right, it it, it looks and and it, it grabs you know the suspense and stuff. So you know, when I I always talk about when I went and saw Blair Witch at the actual theater, I thought Blair Witch Project was amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people now, you know, the the, the trend for a while was to you know. Say, oh, it's so stupid or whatever. But when you're in a theater and you haven't seen anything really like that, it was, you know, it was pretty amazing. And yeah. and uh, I thought it was great. And there's and, and like I said, Long Pigs is like one of those where it's it's um it's mostly handheld, and it kept my interest. Um, but then there's other movies that try it just because they have no budget and it just doesn't really work well. So, I think Cloverfield you know, did it, and it was a big budget. That did. Cloverfield, that wasn't really under uh, because it's a big budget film. Yet they did the uh, the shaky cam. Yeah. They did, but now what, what was your opinion of that movie? Um, I actually, uh, I, I actually thought the best parts underground with the with the mon- with the little monsters. Right. I, I, I didn't think well, a lot of it was too bad, though. I mean, it, it, I, I thought it was all right. You know, a lot of people yeah. said that wasn't I, very good either, but. My my biggest uh, problem was back to the beginning of the movie because I really didn't care about any of the people. I was just waiting for the right. monsters to show up. I was right, like, man, I but you know what? Though that's a big flaw in most movies today, for me at least. I mean, I watch movies all the time. I'm such a nerd for saying that, but it's the truth. Um, I, I just think that in most of the modern movies that are out today, when they put a majority of the story on younger characters, because the younger characters can't seem to, I don't think they can connect well with the people that are watching the film because of the writing. Maybe I don't really know what the what the the connection is. What why they can't really connect, where you don't really care enough about them to, to want to see them survive. You know, like in the 80s, there was a lot of movies where, you know, in, in, uh, in Friday the 13th Part 2, was it Part 2, I think, where you, Amy Steele was, you know, the survivor. You know, you want to see her survive, or Lori Strode. You want to see Lori survive. But in these movies today, like, uh, you know, I don't think that I really, you know, a lot of times I've, I wish that they, you know, end up getting <laughs> off relatively early and move on right. to somebody else. I just want to see how they kill them. It's yeah, like, I, I don't think that they, they don't they don't invest enough enough into the actual character development. They try and fill it with, you know, uh, character story, but a lot of times the story doesn't really get you involved with that particular character unless it's really well written. So I think that's another thing that's missing from the modern horror films. And if uh, if you actually really care about the characters. When one of them gets killed off, I mean, it's a big deal to you, so you don't have to kill a thousand people in a movie for it to, you know... No, I, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you really want to, you know, you feel for that character, and, you know, you can feel their anguish, and you can feel their emotion and everything else they're going through. And if, like I said, I'm not a director, and I'm not a writer as far as, you know, films or anything else. I'm just a guy that watches them, you know, and, and that's just, that's my opinion, you know. John might have a different opinion. I, I don't know. I no, unfortunately, we share a lot of the same opinions within that whole aspect. Yeah. I just, at this point, I'm cheering for everybody but the main characters. Uh, Weeble, did you have anything else to say? No, I mean, Quarantine was like Zombie 2, right? But it had a different camera, Quarantine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah you know what? Yeah, you know what? That, that that was now rec I'll just say it was called record or whatever. Right. I actually finally got it yesterday. Mm-hmm. And uh you know I had only seen quarantine first and I thought quarantine was really good, you know, um uh the carpenter lady there that that's uh married to Dexter there on that show Dexter. Yeah, I know you were. Um, Dexter's sister we'll call her. Yes. Um Jennifer. You know, she, she, it wasn't it wasn't bad, but can I tell you that the Spanish version is so much better? Yeah. 
so much better. It's just, you know, there's more scary scenes. Um, the uh, There were some scenes that they didn't really have in Quarantine that I guess they could have used. But Quarantine, you know, for a remake, I don't know if I really count that as a remake, even though it is, because I'll, I'm, I'm, I would say... You know, 99% of the people that went to the movies to see Quarantine did not even know that Record existed. Or rec- mm. or rec- it, really, though, that's uh, the kind of movies they should remake is uh, something that's not so familiar with people. Yeah. Yeah, I just heard that they were remaking The Orphanage. Really? Yeah, that's what I heard. So, you know, I don't don't know if that's a good one. Well, the Orphanage is fantastic, if anybody mm. hasn't seen that one. That's another... Uh, Garalamo del Toro film, I think, is, is who put that out. That was a couple of years ago. And that's actually on uh, Netflix, too, if you have it. I, I, I should be getting $20 from Netflix for that. Yeah. And there's, um, there's nobody with a good movie. I like yeah. it a lot. There's nobody with uh, eyes in the palm of their hands in that one. <laughs> most of his other films. No. no did, you guys like Pan, did you guys like Pan's Labyrinth? <laughs> oh, I loved it. Yeah, I it was do, just I, a I've liked every you know? movie by him. Yeah, yeah, I think he was... Check uh, out The Devil's Backbone if you haven't seen it. Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen that one yet. Because that's also a uh, Del Toro. It's really good. I just watched a film the other day that had his name attached to it, and I I wasn't really that big on it. It was okay. Hellboy. Maybe it was... Uh, Hellboy 2, I think, was, was a good one, but Hellboy 1... Eh, I like both of them. Yeah, I enjoyed yeah. both of the Hellboys. A lot of fun. I just think that... the the part part two just I think I went and saw the movies and uh, it was uh, on that summer I think it was like two summers ago I was going through and just watching every weekend I was going to the movies I was taking my son and uh, you know we had, I think it was we saw Iron Man right before it or right after it and that was yeah, the summer Bill and I did the home. same thing yep yeah and and you know it, it just was like uh, I, as much as I loved Iron Man because I thought Iron Man was fantastic it was like yep. probably the best you know, transformation from comic to, to movie, um, I thought that Hellboy 2 almost was a little bit better just because it had so much story to it and it had so many different characters. And um, and Rod Perlman was awesome in it, you know. I, I, I really liked it. The only thing I didn't like about Hellboy 2 was the pregnancy, like, you know, angle at the end where, you know, oh, I'm going to have twins or whatever. Well, I don't really, I, I, that, it just, it, it could have done without that. Yeah. Just didn't need it. Uh, but, uh, I'm also a huge comic book fan, so uh, I, I like so much of the nerd stuff. I, it's just I'm a big nerd. Yeah. For that. Are you a fan of The Walking Dead? That's uh, my favorite uh, horror comic out there. Yes. Yeah. And actually, um, I know that they're getting ready to make a TV series out of that. Yeah. I'm really. I, like, I, I don't. I've been saying that it. for years on the show. I always thought it'd be awesome if that would get on HBO or something, but mm-hmm. so the, it's not on HBO. It's on. Um, AMC. AMC. AMC, yeah. And H- HBO would be the perfect place for that. There's no doubt about it. It really would because of all the violence. You know, and that's a that's a movie that I think having to do with zombies, um, or that's a comic that ha- it has to do with zombies, but at the same time, it's more about, see, that brings you into the characters. Oh, yeah. The way that, that, the way that, that story is written, because you care about the characters, and when something happens to that character, you're like, oh, I can't believe it happened. Yeah, I think it was around, like, issue maybe 50-ish, where a main character dies, and you're kind of like, oh, you know, you're disappointed in that. But um, it, it's more about the, the struggle, the social struggle of the of the characters themselves more than the the survival story of the zombies, you know. Yeah. So I, I think really that's what... the later ones, there's really not that many. Then a lot of later issues, there's really not a lot of zombies in them. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, yeah, you know, um, I, I love that one. I've actually just started going back and reading Marvel Zombies again, because I just, I think it's, it's it's hilarious if no one's ever read it. You know, the stuff that they do and the stuff, you know, that goes on if you're a comic book fan, it's it's a chance to see all of your your Marvel superheroes kind of, you know, I guess at their worst, you know, Spider-Man's legs hanging off, and, you know, Captain America has half a head, and, you know, uh, I just, I think it's awesome. Hulk ends up biting off Silver Surfer's head, and they all get cosmic powers because they all share him, and Galactus comes looking for him. I mean, it's, it's it's a fun comic to read if no one's read it. There's like, I think they're on Marvel Zombies 5 now. Hmm. No, I've never read I know it's uh, by the same uh, writer. And the name escapes me at the moment. Who does Walking Dead? Uh, I actually have one right here. Um, Robert, Robert I, yeah. I was just going to say that, yeah. yeah. I have a pile right here. 
at me at all times. I don't know what this says about me, but uh, <laughs> Weeble, what was your favorite horror uh, zombie movie before I let you go? My favorite, I, I really like the Donut of Dead remake. I don't know, I just I really like that one. How they all just went to the mall and it just, it just kind of started there, and then they had to, you know, it kind of had like a point in it. I know it got crapped on by the critics, but I, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. I like it too. I think it was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Weeble. You've been entering the contest and everyone who's uh, sending emails as well. So uh, we'll probably be giving away the uh, DVDs next week. Uh, All right, man. Thanks a lot. Yep. Right. Once they give them to me. Thanks. If I don't steal one from you. Uh, I wanted to know what John's tattoos were. Oh, See God, which on. ones? Uh. <laughs> Leave any horror-related ones? Uh. Uh, fortunately, no, not yet. I am. I do have a piece for my right uh, leg on my thigh. That's actually going to be the creature from the Black Lagoon the entire scene. Nice. Oh, nice. that's pretty. Uh, a few yeah, years ago, we interviewed. Uh, mm-hmm. That was a that was a cheap plug for us. A few years ago, we interviewed uh, Ben Chapman before he passed away. It was uh, the oh. original. Yeah, good stuff. Super nice guy. Super super nice guy. Mm-hmm. And also, yeah, I, the creature is my ultimate favorite. Horror movie monster of all time. I, I, I hate the fact that they're coming out with a remake of it. Yeah, they've been talking about that for a while. I don't know when it's ever actually coming out. It's going to be I mean, kind I of sad. The pictures of, yeah, yeah, go yeah. on. Uh, well, I, I saw the pictures of what the creature's supposed to look like, and it looks more like the Predator. Really? Hmm. Yeah, it, 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 it's so horrible. And the original one still lives up, uh, like holds up. It, it still looks really good. Oh, yeah, the, exactly. It, the, yeah, the Gill Man looks perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm. The the sequels he doesn't look quite as good, but the the original one he looks great. Mm. Yeah, I didn't like the third one where they gave him lungs and then he went back in and then you weren't sure if he lived or died. I could have done without that one. Yeah, that one's not too swinging. He, they get, he get, they're like he gets burnt up. And... Yeah. It's very bizarre. And also, Chief Play, uh, you mentioned Dead Alive earlier. We have a nice pretty rare interview with uh, Tim Balm on the website. But uh, we have a new uh, segment here on the show. I've got uh, 13 questions. Uh, All right. Okay. Well, I don't have a name for you yet, so anybody out there can think of a cool name, let me know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Troy and uh, Jeepers over here, they, they don't know the questions either, so, either, so they can feel free to answer. How about, Neil, how about the 13th throwdown? All right, the 13th throwdown. Uh, until All something right. better comes along, until a better name comes All along. All right. It's two different things, and they're battling. What you got to pick which one you would want to win. It could be things, it could be people, it could just be concepts. The first one is right. real makeup versus CGI. Real makeup. Uh, that's a that's a tough one because I'm a big fan of like the old Savini stuff with the real makeup, but sometimes CGI is is. Uh, is good. I'll say real makeup as well. I'm a, you know, I'm a classic guy. I'll go with the real makeup. Mm. Jeepers. Well, I think that real makeup and maybe like CGI could combine forces and they oh, can, uh, you know, oh, fill, fill in the gap yeah. where something there's looks. Rule, there's rules to this. You have to, you have to pick one or the other. You son of a bitch. <laughs> real makeup. <laughs> no ties. Hey. No hands time. down, real makeup. Hands down. Yeah. You can always Although tell. Although there wouldn't be any sci-fi channel movies without CGI. <laughs> That's true. Those are. You guys got to review some of those. They're pretty awesome. Yeah, like the yeah, Rock you know what, um, and the Ogre. What is the new one? The octa, the octopus. Uh, there's a new octopus one coming out. It's like a shark octopus or something. <laughs> giant, giant octopus versus mega shark or whatever. Maybe, yeah. There's all kinds of stuff that's out there. Yeah, sci-fi I, I has like, no problem putting out stinkers. I, I like when they just, like, grab a copy of the Monster Manual, like the old Dungeons and Dragons thing, and open to a random page and just put their finger on it. <laughs> so that's that be, that bugbear. Beyond, that's Loch, next. Beyond Loch Ness was probably my favorite one. They had Loch Ness monster actually swim underground from Ireland or Scotland to, all the way to oh America. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so <laughs> I was just able to... I was just able to catch Carney the other day, which was about the uh, the Jersey Devil escaping or something from some sideshow. It was awful. Nice. Terrible. Well, that sounds like such a ripoff of um, 
Oh, uh, F. Paul Wilson, who who we also talked to in one of the uh, Repairman Jack, the Rakosh, who are these great monsters. They, um, a carny captures one of them and has it as like their their. I think the the book is uh, all the rage, and they have it on display as like their shark men, and they. This other guy finds out the scientist. He comes in and like starts taking its blood, and he finds out that if you kind of distill its blood, if you make this drug out of it, it like makes you like super testosterone boy, and you just, you know, if you're if you're playing any sports or if you need like ultimate confidence or anything like that, you you use this, so it becomes the new designer drug, and they call it Rage, and uh, that sounds like a wicked ripoff of that. That just reminded me. <laughs> All right, the second Great one. Great story, though. Great book, if you need, if you're looking for one. We got a lot of uh, names here popping up in the chat room, but uh, next one is King Kong versus Godzilla. <laughs> Ooh, I gotta go with Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta stick with my my lizard man. Hey, you, Neil, you know me. I love the original King Kong, but I gotta go with Godzilla. Yeah. If this is like a throwdown, like if the two of them are duking it out, mm-hmm. I mean, Godzilla's what, like 300 feet it's tall? This is who you want to win. Uh, it's, it's oh, all... okay. All right, then then I'm going with Kong. But uh, if it's a fight between the two, I'd have to give it to Godzilla. All right. Because Kong's now, about 50 feet tall, and he doesn't breathe fire. Well, some of these things can't actually fight. Like, real makeup's not going to have a battle with CGI. Good so point. You, you have to use them. But anyway, uh, black yeah, and if white. It did, if, it, if it did, real makeup would kick its ass. Damn yeah. right. They just have to unplug the CGI. It'd be all over. Yep. Uh, black and white versus color. I'm going to go with black and white because our show is actually shot in black and white. Hell yeah. <laughs> I like color. Hmm. As much as I love the creature from the Black Lagoon in black and white, I, I just like the color of the whole 80s style in the early 90s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It pains me, but I, I think I'm going to have to go with color as well. I'm a big I'm a big Monsters fan, so, you know, yeah. if the Monsters are in color, I just can't watch it. Yeah, definitely. I'm going with black and white on that one. Mm. Nice. Good stuff. Uh, Mr. Old School. Mm. You're the tiebreaker on that one, Neil. Oh, I'd go black and white. All right. Nice. <laughs> uh, cannibalism versus sushi. Nice. Hmm. I don't even know what that. Like, is that what we prefer, or right. what? Just what wins. Huh. Uh, I. Uh, you know what? For the sake of horror, I'm going to go with cannibalism, just because it makes tremendous movies. Hmm. When's the last time you've heard of the killer sushi? <laughs> yeah, like it'd be happening. Hmm. I think I'm gonna I have to go with uh, the chef. He he should get the final say on this one. Okay, yeah, we'll go to him last on that one. I'm All throwing right. the swerve nail. I'm saying like sea monsters eating their own kind, and I'm combining the two. Breaking the rules. He's breaking I the rules, Neil. I'm throwing the swerve yeah. at you, bots. I'm so going to cannibalism. cannibalism. Yeah. I, I don't like uncooked fish, so I'd yeah. rather eat it like a human steak. Ah. Hmm. You know, I don't think I ever want to resort to cannibalism, so <laughs> I think uh, I think I'll go with sushi. Right. Would you resort to sushi though? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've Would ate you it ever before. Be hungry enough to eat sushi? I've ate it before, and I ne- necessarily didn't like it, but uh, I'd probably eat it again. I don't want to go hungry. I'd rather eat a dead fish than dead human. <laughs> or live human. The chef? You know what? I'm going to have to go with cannibalism. I've made enough sushi in my time. I'm willing to give cannibalism a shot at this point. Yeah, oh there God. you go. That's a good man. I know not to get on a plane with you all and be wrecked. I know. It's where, where, where would Cannibal Holocaust be with sushi? <laughs> yeah, the sushi holocaust. Yeah. Come on, nobody's watching that. Yeah, just going around right. cutting up some fish. <laughs> <laughs> Remake versus reimagining. <laughs> oh, <Ugh. laughs> oh, I, I, 
Jeez. What's the difference? Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean it would man. be like it would be like it's almost like saying you know Rob Zombie remake or being punched in the face. I would take punched in the face. <laughs> I'll I just, take punch in the face. Yeah, I, I I'll say uh, uh, I'll say reimagining as long as it's creative, not like they ever are, but I'll say reimagining. All right. Hmm. Since I hate remakes, reimagining. <laughs> uh, you guys have an opinion on this one? I think I'll uh, go with reimagining. I like the pizzazz to it. It does. It does have pizzazz. I'm going to go with remake, though, because there's honesty to it. Uh, there you reimagining go. makes you think yeah. that you're getting more than you're really getting. Yeah, they're you know, trying to make it a little They're trying to, to pull the wool over your eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. don't lie to me. I it's like the carny aspect about reimagining, though. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. But don't you know? Don't don't feed me shit and tell me it's ice cream. You know. Don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining. He doesn't, it. he doesn't. He doesn't like. He doesn't like the bait and switch. Remake. He doesn't me. like the. He doesn't like the bait and switch. Remake. Just tell me it's crap right off the bat. Don't lie to me. Just boom. Uh, did Did we get the stress opinion on this one? Yeah, he answered. Yeah, yeah I was, you're reimagining. Right, I was the only that. remake on that one. All right, we've got Ed Wood versus Yui Bull. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go with Ed Wood because, yeah, yeah, me too. I just think that – I think that he uh, – I can actually go back and watch his films and smile. Mm-hmm. The old movie, I, the old movie I can't even watch and, and even smirk my face. I end up shredding it. <laughs> mm, I'm going to – that guy, that guy gets crapped on by everybody, but – did you see that that guy wanted to fight like some film reviewer in Canada or something? Like they box and kick his ass. Did you see that? Yeah, he, he put out a video challenging him. Yeah, he's and he got a great did... accent though. I love his accent. He sounds like Wolfgang Puck. That's... I mean, maybe his accent's better than his movies. I don't know. It's true. It's very true. He sure gets big stars in his movies. I don't. I don't know why. But... He got a big paycheck, man. He got like a the big bank account. Yeah, I'm going with Ed Wood. Hmm. If Huey Bull ever offered to fight me, I would fight him. You just kick his ass, John. Well, I, know I don't know if I would or not. I kind of just sit you. around a lot and drink a lot of pop, but I'd do it. <laughs> what the hell? But yeah, I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going with, with Edward. Yes, I'm going with Edward too. Because Johnny Depp never played Huey Bull in a movie, man. Hey, you know what? I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't box him, but I would use a foreign object on his ass. That's for sure. Oh yeah. I would choke him, hit him with a chair, gig oh, him a little bit. Whatever has to be done. Yep. Pizza cutter. Check him in the bean. Hanging out with Steve yeah. way too much. <laughs> Just uh, in the chat room there. Uh, you know, we do not condone cannibalism. It's, uh, you can't We're believe everything. Huey Bull. Come on. Uh, Black Devil Doll versus Leprechaun in the Hood. Hmm. Leprechaun in the Hoodie. Rats are crying out loud. Uh, that's, probably the, that's probably the best one of the franchise, I've always said, Leprechaun I'm, in the Hood. I'm going to go with uh, Black Devil Doll because he's a mother effing puppet. Uh-huh. Hmm. Never seen Black Devil Doll, so I'll have to go with uh, Leprechaun in the Hood. I'm with John on that one. I never saw the the other one, so I'm going oh. Leprechaun in the Hood. Um, you guys got to see Black Devil, though. Good, uh, good stuff there. But I'm going with Leprechaun in the Hood. <laughs> <laughs> you're turning your back on your own movie. <laughs> this one, uh, you got... <laughs> Go on. It's really bad. <laughs> is Leprechaun in the Hood really that uh, good of a film? I mean... It, it is the it is the best of the of the Leprechaun franchise. I mean, it sounds like you, you, know, oh, yeah. you highly recommend this Black Devil doll, and then you say, I'm going with Leprechaun in the Hood, though, instead. I highly recommend the Black Devil Dog trailer. Devil doll trailer. Oh. Oh, yeah, me too. No doubt. Yeah. I, mean, whole, I think it's on... I uh, have the trailer. Go Rotten Cotton, I think. uh uh-huh. If you watch a whole movie, it's uh, not as enjoyable as the the trailer. Uh, Elvira... That's not a ringing endorsement, Neil. Mm. Elvira versus Joe Bob Briggs. Nice. Elvira. Elvira. You know, I was a big uh, I was a big uh, uh, Monster Vision fan. I'm going to go with Joe Bob Briggs. Mm. I, think oh, I go with Joe Bob Briggs, but he didn't show any cleavage. 
<laughs> That's oh. true, but are you questioning my uh, sexuality? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, never. Joe Bob's a damn handsome man. That he is. Well, I, I, I give that to you. <laughs> I'm going with Joe Bob. Oh, Joe man. Bob, he was in Casino. Come on. Uh. I love Joe Bob Briggs. Why do you go with the original? Thank you go with Elvira. All right. Oh, no, I, I did, just, I did no like her movie. Change that. Yeah. I still, to this day, think Elvira is, like, smoking hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I've, I've never once said that about Briggs. Never once. <laughs> nah, me either. Now, we should have a three-way dance for the next one. It's uh, Boo Berry versus Count Chocula versus Frankenberry. Oh, man. Uh, Count Chocula for the win, no doubt. Frankenberry. Count Chocula. I'm going Booberry, kids. I love me some Booberry. Yeah, I was going with Booberry, too. Actually, uh, any of the Frankenberry or the Booberry, I'm not really a big fan of uh, chocolate. So I, I'm picking Booberry, though. But I yeah, don't know, you guys... Count Chocula seems like a cookie too much. You, you guys might be too young, but uh, the Fruit Brute and the Yummy Mummy were like the two monster cereals that got like dropped by the wayside. Uh, Fruit Brute, he was a werewolf, and then the Yummy Mummy was a mummy. I think I remember those, but I mean, you I mean, I'm, not, I, I, I mean I, I'm going to be forty this year, so yeah. I mean, okay, I, I you're a couple years those. younger than me, so so I, I vaguely remember them. I mean, it's not. Yeah, like, I mean, I vaguely re- I remember when I was a kid, though. I could not yeah. stop eating Count Chocula. That stuff was like oh, my I could favorite eat them all. ever. If I had a box right now, I'd pour it into a giant mixing bowl and eat the whole thing. <laughs> Any one of them. Any one of the monster cereals. Can mix them up or together. Freakies. Do you I remember the, Freakies? No, I never even heard of that one. Freakies was great. Not only was the cereal delicious, they had these weird mutant creatures, like, all over them. They were the Freakies. And then, like, their toys, like, uh... See, I always bought cereals depending on what kind of, uh... What kind of hoo-ha they had stuck inside. And they always had the best ones. They had, like, little race cars they put balloons on and things like that. And they all had the different freakies. But one guy was, like, uh, he was a real demented-looking, like, elephant mutant because he had a big trunk. And uh, See, Ron would, would remember his name. I can't remember his name offhand. Hmm. But he, he ruled. He was the man. Let's be on the lookout for that one. Yeah. We've got uh, the next one is Farmer Vincent's Fritters versus Mrs. Ah. Lovett's Meat Pies. <laughs> uh, I, I'm gonna go with Motel Hell. Takes all kinds of critters. Exactly to make I Farmer like meat Vincent's pies. Ah, oh, the chef's a big fan of the meat pies. Yeah, I am. I am mainly because Alton Brown did a special on it too. So <laughs> well, uh, I've seen that. So I'm definitely going with the fritters. I'm a big fan of Motel Hell. Once you sample that Mrs. Lovett's that gonna be Sweet remake Pies. Me. Yeah, I think they are Sample remaking it. Sweet Pies. Are they really? Jeez, yeah, I, I saw that uh, online not too long ago. I'm going with Mrs. Lovett. I'm going with the Meat Pies. All right. Uh, Jeepers went to uh, check on his cat, so he brought it back. All Maybe right. he went to get a Meat Pie. I don't know. Uh, I mean, Blood Feast versus the Wizard of Gore. Oh, Jesus. Mm. There are no losers here on this one. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I'll go with uh, Wizard of Gore. Yeah, that's kind of what I was leaning to a little bit on that one. I always thought that was his best movie, even though I don't think he's really a big fan of it. But uh, I always, I was like, Montag's great. Yeah, Montag's great, but uh, Fwad's plastic eyebrows just narrowly sneak uh, Blood Feast for me. <laughs> All right. Jeepers, Blood Feast versus the Wizard of Gore. Ah, oh, I gotta go with Montag. It's Montag. <laughs> Man, I got I got the crap beaten out of me on that one. Four to one. Yeah. Uh, I want my cake, Bedelia versus Thanks for the Ride, Lady. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is a feud. Uh, gotta go with cake. I'll, I'll say Thanks for the Ride, Lady. Thanks for the Ride, Lady. Thanks, Thanks for the Ride, Lady. <laughs> It's Father's Day, Bedelia. Gotta go with the K. Well, thanks for the ride, lady. He only had one line, and I think it was very rememberable. (laughs) I want my cake, Bedelia. He would have some variations. 
you'd call mm-hmm. them you bitch or something like that. So yeah, yeah. I gotta go with thanks for the ride, lady, because the man got hit by a car and he was riding along and <laughs> thanking he's her. He's got nothing else going for him. Yeah, that's all he's got yeah. going for. Him. He got hey, a cake at remember, the end. You guys, do you guys remember where he was going? <laughs> no, I don't. Did they say? <laughs> Did it say Delaware, on the sign? sign? He said, oh. I think it said on the sign Delaware. I think I can't remember for a fact. I'm almost positive. Oh. We had uh, someone on the show once who was uh, putting together. Um, like a some type of horror convention, and that was like his big get was telling us that he was getting the guy who played uh, Thanks for the Ride Lady. You know? <laughs> really? Yeah. Lines like, around the cool, block. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that, that would be a, a big draw. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Say and it. Final. Say draw. it. Thanks for the ride, lady. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> All right. See you, man. <laughs> and finally, Shambling Zombies versus Running Zombies. Zombies don't run. I like running zombies. Really? Yeah. I think we found the thing you challenge. guys are disagreeing on. It's going to be a throwdown between the zombies. Yeah, I got to say that there's something about the staggering zombies and the slow-moving zombies that always just... I mean, don't get me wrong that if, if a fast zombie was coming at me, I would I would, I would crap. But um, <laughs> something about the, the slow moving zombies that always just, I mean, that's, I think what everyone can visualize and, and see when they, when the word zombie comes up, that's kind of what they see. You know, mm-hmm. Romero was, was, uh, the guy that really, you know, started the, the, the genre for that. So he, he kind of like capitalized on the, I think he actually has a shirt when you go to like, and you go to like see him at conventions and say zombies don't run or something like that. I can't remember. I agree a hundred percent though. Mm-hmm. See, I think it's creepier. Yeah, even though I in real life, like, like if they were yet run that, you'd be pretty uh, terrifying. But uh, when you watch yeah, you... them on TV, it's a lot cooler seeing them, they, them just uh, shambling around, and not so many. Like uh, some of the newer ones, when there's like a thousand zombies, and you can tell they're just all kind of computerized. It's it's not as cool as seeing like uh, you know five or six really uh, slow creepy. Just kind of overkill at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I think it's well, I think it's good when they're a little bit open CGI right there. When they're when they're when they're weaker, you know, when they're not like able to break the door down, when they're weaker and it takes like you know ten or twelve to break a door down, then you know it kind of gives your characters that are trying to survive some sort of hope. The faster the zombies, I mean, if that really was the case, it'd be like impossible for anybody to survive. Yeah, it'd be totally. Hmm. You know, they're like lightning fast, so I mean, they run way faster than me. That's for sure. I'm going with shambling zombies. No, I'm going with the shambling. Oh, man. So it's four to one. That's all right. All right. So I hope that went over well. Uh, anything you guys want to tell everybody out there? Um, you know, just check us out at latenighthorrorhotel.com. And uh, hopefully, you know, if, if anybody has any questions about the uh, the tour of terror, make sure you go to our site and email us. It's latenighthorrorhotel at hotmail.com. Uh, that way we can make sure that we, you know, get in contact Anybody, if anybody's interested um, and they want to do it, if, if they work at a haunted house or a haunted attraction, or they know somebody that owns one, or they go to one that they, you know, that they think would be good for it, anything like that would be um, fantastic. I mean, that would just, you know, help us, and it's only going to help that attraction because we're going to bring attention to that attraction. You know, whether it's internet, inter- you know, whether it's on online or, or anywhere else, you know, we're going to do our best to to go out there and entertain and have a good time and, and hopefully, you know, make people more aware that there's other horror hosts out there. And, you know, if we're in a different area, you know, maybe, you know, it's possible where, you know, th- then that local horror host in that area would have some sort of, you know, um, would, would grow more of a fan base too. I mean, we're not just more or less out there to just promote ourselves, we're out there to promote horror in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, chef? You know, like I said, just kind of check us out. Uh, hit us up. We're just here to help everybody out and just network and meet everyone pretty much. Uh, we'll put the link uh, right up on the website. And so if you, if you can't spell, which, uh, you'd be pretty pathetic if you can't spell that, but you can just click right on the link. <laughs> Don't I judge. You guys, are gonna dr- you guys said you're going to draw us this week or something? Yeah, Troy draws all the characters and I color them in. Sweet. I just need a picture. Just need like a photo or something. I'll send it to you. 
Yeah. Yeah, we Rob's got a ton of photos of himself. Good. <laughs> yes. I'm all about me, so don't worry about it. Do you guys, do you guys have any, uh, do you guys have any last minute wrestling questions or anything? I know you guys also do the wrestling show. Right. Uh, you guys. Wrestling questions. Uh, what did you think about the ECW zombie? <laughs> ECW oh, zombie? Uh, yeah, you know what? That was, uh, I was a huge ECW fan and, and, uh, you know, that, that was, when, as soon as McMahon took it over, man, oof, what a what a disaster! There was never anything that was ever going to be good that was going to come from that. You know the the the, the you know, and I, I know that there's talk now of TNA like bringing in like an ECW revival, you know, or they're yeah, like they're going to some of the guys are going to come back or whatever. But a lot of the guys, you know, they just, they aren't the same people. You know, I, I almost would rather have you know be able to put in my DVDs and watch them and say, oh, you know, those were you know. 95, 96, 97, you know, those were some amazing years. You know, even 2000 when they were on TNN, if you go back and watch it, you know, those were some fantastic shows. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, even, I don't even care if they bring in Heyman or not. I just don't think, I think the TNA is so far gone that it would almost literally, literally take, like, two weeks to shut that down and restart and, and re-familiarize everybody with everybody else. I mean, it's so far out of whack. I just don't think there's any way you can save it right now. Do you think the the uh, WWE's version of ECW like kind of killed off the ECW uh, legacy to a degree? I mean, you don't even hear like the ECW chants like you used to before they actually brought it back. Oh, yeah, it definitely um, killed it. I mean, ECW was more of that underground grunge style. It just had such a cult following, and WWE put it into such of a mainstream limelight that it just took away from it the darkness that ECW portrayed. You know, when they did the one night stand pay per views, I was, I thought they were great. Those some of the best pay per views they did. And then when they actually brought yeah. it back, they took away everything that worked from that and just, uh, you know, it was taped well, before or after SmackDown. And that was the Smackdown. one. That was the one where they uh, was that the one where Cena got booed. Mm-hmm. That was the second one, yeah. Yeah, you know, like um, for me, ECW is always going to be uh, at the arena, you know, and the arena now, even though, you know, if I go there and, you know, I've worked there for CDW and a couple other places, um, it's never going to be, um, it's never going to be the ECW arena. It's still, to me, the ECW arena, but those memories and stuff are gone. It's not the same building. It's not the same crowd. Um, you know, it's a lot different. I mean, I, I'm happy when we're there that the crowd that's there, you know, they like even CZW, for instance, still packs in, you know, four or 500 people or when they have their, their, uh, their bigger, uh, what's that, uh, term of death, not term of death. They have hell in the cell thing that they have cage of death. That's it. Oh, yeah. uh, when they have the, that, the they swing. pack in like 1200 people, you know, but, uh, I don't know, you know, ECW to me, I don't, I don't think Vince really, Vince tried to kill it off, but the people that were there and went to the shows and stuff like that. And, um, remember ECW for what it was, it's never, like, I don't even think of Vince's version of, of being ECW. I don't even think of it as, as being ECW, at least for me. Definitely. Uh, I know Chikar is running the ECW, right? I guess they did last week for the King of Trios tournament. Are you surprised yeah. that people just keep uh, going there? Uh I mean, I, I think that I know Ring of Honor runs their TV tapings out of there. Um, you know, and I don't know, you know, I think that what happens is is um, the crowd that's there has seen everything. Like, you can't, it's almost impossible to top, you know, the angles and stuff that went down when it was TWA and then the early, you know, Eastern Championship Wrestling and then it was, you know, ECW. It's hard to top that stuff when you had, like, Kevin Sullivan in the building and you had, you know, Abdul the Butcher in the building and, and then you had the ECW guys in the building. So, it's, you know, there's not stars like that today that are in that building, you know. Ring of Honor is probably the closest um, because they have, um, they have, I think their, their talent pool is probably the best. Um, I know that Christopher Daniels just went back there. So, I mean, they put on some amazing matches, but it's just it's a different type of feel. Like, when I went to the Ring of Honor escaping, um, it was a lot of kids, which I was kind of surprised about. Yeah. It kind of blew me away. You know, it wasn't it wasn't the hardcore fans. Well, you think they'd be better trying to find their own 
EC, not the ECW arena, but their own, you know, their own play, their own building, and they could make that their building instead of just trying to like, live off like uh, the mystique of, of the ECW arena. You know, Philly, whenever they go there, Philly's, gonna be tough. With it. Philly's a tough place to run. Um, it's not like there's a lot of a lot of uh, rec, there's a lot of rec centers, but a lot of them, you know, have been burned by smaller companies. You know, some of these smaller companies will go in and they'll, they'll, you know, they're told not to do stuff and they'll do stuff and they make it harder for the next group to come in. So, I mean, the arena, you know you're going to get some sort of response out of it. Um, I know that in the past some other companies have run there and not drawn well at all, like 50, 60 people. So, I mean, it's not just the building that draws. I mean, it's still the promotion has to have some sort of steam behind it. In order to draw, you know, the people have to, the promoter has to promote. That's why it's called the promoter. Yeah. You, know, you have to have talent on your show. You have to, you know, you have to do the necessary things. You can't just sit online and sit on Facebook and expect people to come to your show because it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to actually physically go out and put flyers up in South Philly and say, hey, we have wrestling, you know, blah, 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 whatever. You know, the women's, women's extreme wrestling runs out of there, and I think they draw pretty well. And, I mean, it's just a, a bunch of, you know, women wrestlers, very few wrestlers, and I think it's more like a lot of strippers and stuff. They give up yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff. That's uh, the women's wrestling I want to see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm a big fan of Wrestlelicious. No. Uh, you know, I actually watched one of the shows, and I would watch that over TNA. <laughs> just uh, real quick, TNA, isn't that just a terrible name, the name itself? I mean, it's embarrassing just to say you're call you're watching a show. I like if I call up and order the pay per view, and I'm saying I want to order a TNA pay per view. They giggle and they've actually thought it was on Spice Channel. And... What a watch! You know I, I, I don't it's TNA baby. The the week the week that Hogan and Flair came back, I watched, and uh, I don't really watch WWE anymore. I don't really watch TNA anymore. Um, I don't even really watch Ring of Honor, which I, I, I usually will try and watch it when I can. I just I'm a, such a fan of old school, old style wrestling like Georgia and Memphis and places like that. You know that's what wrestling lacks today. It doesn't have they don't give the characters enough time to tell the story in the ring. They try and you know make these guys you know cut these 15 minute promos and they usually are just a lot of rambling and they try and get the crowd into it and it's very commercialized instead of being you know. When you watch wrestling in the 70s and 80s, it was, you know, it was in your heart. Now it's just, you know, I just kind of think of it as like a moving sideshow, more or less. We want to thank guys for coming on tonight. And anybody out there is listening and wondering why we're talking about wrestling, they're also involved in wrestling. And you can also check out our other website, inyourheadonline.com, live every Wednesday, 8.05 p.m. Eastern. Uh, coming up on the show, we got Chief J. Strongbow and, uh, next week, and we got a... Uh, Lex Luger, Paul Orndorff, a whole bunch of guests. Uh, check out the website, and you can get all the information. Boss Mahoney, original ECW guys coming on. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. Thanks, thanks, guys, for coming on. Hey, thanks, guys, for having us. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Hi there, this is Barbie Wilde, and I'm best known for playing the female Cenobite in Hellbound Hellraiser 2 and for being the writer of The Venus Complex and Voices of the Damned. You're listening to Without Your Head.